so to conclude our discussion of biological macromolecules, um, we just I've just composed a little bit of a quiz, and I'll go through some of these questions just as a bit of a review about some of the concepts and stuff, and some of the common questions you might be asked in like a quiz or an end of term exam or something. So um, they're pretty straightforward, um, but some of the, some of the later ones I hope will be a bit challenging. So I'll talk about the questions. I'm written down word for word the questions. Um, but I'll talk about them and then I'll give you a second to you know think about it and before I I'll pause this and then I'll go over the solution. So uh, my first question is relating to this molecule and it's pretty straightforward. Um, you have a molecular formula C6H12O6 and the question is what type of macromolecule is this? And we should be able to identify this is a um, carbohydrate. And you'll probably be able to identify this one as one of the most common ones, which is glucose. So carbohydrate just has the um, empirical formula C N H two N O N. So there's equal numbers of carbons and oxygens, and twice the number of hydrogens in each carbohydrate. So that's pretty straightforward. Moving on to the next one, we have this um, amino acid here, which I've just made up. Um, I don't think it actually exists in um, nature, but um, if it was a naturally occurring um, um, amino acid that was incorporated into proteins, um, where what sort of region do you think it would sit in in um, in a protein? Where where would it sit? So the options would be um, at the surface of the protein, um, at, um, in the or in the interior of the protein. Okay, for this one, um, I think the main key is this um, this polar OH group on the end. Um, despite the fact that there's quite a few, quite a large carbon tail here, um, you got this polar OH group, and so that would probably interact with water. So you'd probably see this um, somewhere, somewhere at the interface with an aqueous environment, like out here, there would be an aqueous environment. So you'd see this at the interface of the protein, so on the surface of the protein, most likely. Um, so next question, this one is, um, there's a fatty acid here. The first question is whether it's saturated or um, whether it's, sorry, I've actually, um, so this shouldn't have a hydrogen here and this shouldn't have a hydrogen here. But um, whether it's saturated or unsaturated, that's pretty straightforward. But also, um, what would happen to a, pro, uh, to a um, membrane that had this fatty acid um, incorporated? Would it be more fluid or less fluid at a certain temperature? So say at 20 degrees C, with this, if this was in a um, membrane um, lipid, would it be, would the membrane be more fluid or less fluid than um, if it was an unsaturated? So uh, if it was a saturated. So this is an unsaturated fatty acid um, because it's got this double bond here and it um, doesn't have um, hydrogens occupying all of the possible places on the, um, on the, um, on the, um, aliphatic chain and because of this it when you have double bonds it actually kinks the carbon chain a little and it actually makes it um sort of bump into its neighbors um when it's um incorporated into say a phospholipid so in fact this would make the um, membrane more fluid because it sort of um pushes the um the um, membrane um lipids apart and um creates sort of space for itself a bit and by doing that it makes a more fluid environment within the membrane so next one here is this um, amino acid here. This is a real one. This is valine. Um, and the question is just um, where would this sit um, at the surface of a protein or in the interior of a protein? Um, as we can see, um, the side chain is um, just, um, we're just considering side chain, of course, because these would be bonded in peptide bonds, most likely. Um, um, but the side chain is, um, there's no polar groups. It's all... Um, aliphatic um, CH bonds and um, it's all non-polar so that would probably sit at the interior of a protein. The next one is another amino acid which is um, a, um, an amino acid, its side chain contains sulfur and um, the question is just sort of um, what sort of um, what sort of um, structural feature would this most likely create within a protein? And the answer is a disulfide bridge, so this would be reduced and probably um, with another one nearby would bond to it and then you'd have, you know, that would continue out 
And so you'd have this creating a sulfide bridge um, and a covalent link between two um, areas of protein. So that would be probably what that, that um, residue would cause. So just a couple more questions. Um, a double-stranded um, strand of DNA is, contains 30% adenine residue. So out of all its residues, 30% are adenine or A residues. Um, the question is what percentage are cytosine residues? So um, I'll just dive into this. Um, pretty much um, because A pairs with T and G pairs with C, um, you can you can say that, um, and these are purines and these are pyrimidines. You can say 50% of the protein is purine, and 50% is pyrid uh, not of the protein, sorry, of the new, um, of the double stranded um, uh, nucleic acid um, DNA. Uh, is 50% is purine, 15% is pyrimidine, and so adenine is our, um, our is a purine. So um, it's 30%. Um, so the remaining um, of the 50% of purines must be G. So um, G must be 20% of all residues. And if G is 20%, sorry, if G is 20%, then um, correspondingly C must be equal to that and must be 20%. Yeah, cool. And the last one is a macromolecule contains phosphorus and sulfur. What is it? This is a bit of a trick question because the only macromolecule that always contains phosphorus is um, a nucleic acid, but it doesn't contain sulfur. Um, the real question here is, um, w the real trick here is knowing that um, phosphorylation of um, a protein is a way of regulating the protein. So if you analyze a piece of protein, it could have phosphorus um, attached, and it would also have sulfur in its um, in its cysteine residues um, with the sulfur containing groups and stuff. So um, the correct answer to this is the macromolecule is a protein, and it's obviously being, being phosphorylated as part of a regulatory attempt um, by the cell. Okay, that's a few review questions on um, some b um, the basics of macromolecules and stuff and um, next we'll be going to sort of biological energetics and ener energy changes within biological reactions.